Hello everybody, it's been a whole two years since I bought my Dell G15 Ryzen Edition and I feel like a lot has changed in the PC gaming landscape since then, but this is still one of my favorite gaming gadgets and I wanted to go over my current thoughts on it. So here it is and let's discuss how it's held up so far. Before that though, I kinda wanted to go over my go bag setup for the G15. There might be something you might find interesting in here, but for the bag I use a 15 inch Lenovo gaming laptop backpack. I keep a wired mouse in here, currently it's the Alienware mouse. I just like it because the settings are all contained in the Alienware command center. It also doesn't overdo it with the amount of buttons it has, just two extra buttons on the top and three on the side. Each button is also really big and easy to press. I carry a quarter keyboard gamepad. I don't use it often, but I find it's comfortable for first person shooters or any other like WASD movement games. Some big companies make uh, really nice programmable ones, but I find the mouse buttons are enough, and I only need this for like normal keyboard inputs. I also carry around a game controller. This is an 8-bit dough case. I do uh, have several Xbox controllers, but in this one is a Stadia controller. Stadia is dead, sure, but the uh, controller is surprisingly comfortable, and Google actually released a firmware update to make it work with Bluetooth. It also has all the buttons I need for modern games, like the start, select, uh, the Stadia button also works as an Xbox button. The USB-C cable that it came with is nice and long, so if I want to use it wired or I can uh, charge the controller while it's on the go. There are also several small pockets inside the bag where I have some smaller and lesser used accessories. One of these is a small wrist pad for the mouse. This one feels like a small bean bag and has a rubber feet on one side to keep it from moving. It's good for longer gaming sessions. While there is enough space and a loop meant to hold some really good headphones in here, I don't really carry around one because the headphones leave an indent on my head and my hair. So instead, I keep a cheap pair of wired earphones. These also have a mic on it though, so I can communicate in online games if I do happen to play them. It doesn't sound great, but it does the job. The last thing I keep in here is a necessity for a gaming laptop. Of course, it's the huge original AC adapter that came with it. But for the amount of times I had to use this thing, like taking it out and unwrapping the cord, then wrapping the cord and putting it back in, it's actually held up really well. So now onto the main event. I generally keep all my electronics clean and treat them well so your experiences may not match with mine. As you can see my laptop is basically still looking new. The back ports are in good condition even with all the heat that's pumped out of there. All the ports here are still working and I use them a lot. I've only used the ethernet port once when setting up a new router but I know it still works and the headset port is still going strong too. The front is fine, there's nothing really that can break here. The two USB ports on the right side have gotten a lot of use, so I feel like they're a little loose fitting than it used to be. So in general, the outside of the laptop looks great. Your mileage may vary, of course, depending on how careful you are with your portable equipment. So let's open the screen up and check how the deck is faring. The screen hinge is still very sturdy on my unit, no cracks or anything either. Here's a look at the keyboard. The keyboard has held up really well for mine, but I also don't type on it much. I think most gaming laptops will have the WASD keys or the number keys wear out, but for most of my fast paced gaming I use that quarter keyboard pad I showed earlier so I probably put less stress on the keyboard than a normal user. I remember complaining about how the trackpad didn't sit evenly on my original view, but I feel like it's fixed itself now. It sits pretty flush. Of course it still feels horribly plasticky, but it's still super sensitive to touch and usable. I made a few changes over the years to the hardware, some I've made videos for, but since then I've made some more changes and repurposed some of the uh, older original hardware for other projects. So while I open the chassis, here's what my laptop originally came with. The blue colored items are upgradable items in this laptop. So the original 2230 size 512GB NVMe SSD happened to be the perfect fit to replace the 64GB drive in my Steam Deck. I have a video on that replacement too. But I ended up putting Windows on that one and it's been running great so far. It's nice to be able to easily play Xbox Game Pass games on it. I also upgraded to 32GB of RAM which I got on sale and I repurposed the 16GB that the G15 already came with and put it in my Atari VCS. The Wi-Fi card is actually very good in this laptop so I don't think I'll have to replace that at all but the option is there if it goes bad or if you need to upgrade. The battery life was a real plus for this laptop when I first reviewed it two years ago. If you put in like a low power mode, I was able to get 9 to 10 hours of battery life with web browsing or light app usage. In general, I don't use it that way since my main intention is to game on it, which is always hard on battery life. But I also can't get the amount of battery life I used to anymore. This is probably mainly due to the software and driver issues I'll talk about later, but it could just be an aging battery too. 
So the screws still hold fast and it's easy as ever to open. Some people have commented in my previous videos that they can't get the screws out. Remember that four of them are captive screws and can only loosen while the other four are fully removable. These screws can and should be fully removed. And these screws are captive so you just turn them until they spin loosely. Not much dust has collected in the vent since I last opened it, but I also make it a point to clean it every time I have to open the laptop. So here's my main drive. It's a one terabyte Western Digital Gen 4 drive. It's a slower Gen 4, but it's still a Gen 4. The laptop only supports up to Gen 3 speeds, but the Gen 4 NVMe drives will work fine as they're backwards compatible. My secondary drive is a 500 gigabyte Samsung Gen 3 SSD. I only put games on this drive. So here's my 32 gigabytes of DDR3200 megahertz RAM. The timings on this one is CL22, so not as good as the previous 16 gigabyte I had, which was CL20. But the deal was too good to pass up for more memory when I got it. At the time I was using this as my primary video editor too, so more memory was potentially helpful. I've since moved on to using a MacBook as a uh, video editor. I've noticed lately that the storage and memory prices are dropping very fast, so it might be a good time to upgrade if you've been putting it off. The hardware and upgradability side of this laptop hasn't disappointed me yet, and because of that, I know I'll still be using this laptop for years to come. So now comes the sore spot for me, at least since last year, and that's the software and driver support. So surprisingly, Dell has been supporting this laptop with updates, but it seems like every company these days involved in PC gaming are releasing broken stuff. The biggest gripe I have here is there's currently a problem with the brightness controls not working in Windows. This seems to be caused by the NVIDIA drivers and possibly in combination with Windows because going back to a much older NVIDIA driver seems to make it work again. I'm not sure if this is only affecting the 165Hz screen models or if it also affects the 120Hz screen variants, but uh, let me know if anyone found a real fix for this. While it's not a fix, there are a couple of workarounds that are uh, pretty easy. The first one is to turn off the hybrid graphics in the BIOS. This will give you the brightness controls back and also give you better gaming performance. The problem is that it also means less battery life since the NVIDIA GPU will always be in use. This is currently the way I decided to use the laptop full time, which is fine because I mainly use it for gaming anyways. Another way that I can work to control the brightness is using a third party app. I found an app called Dimmer which lets you control display brightness. There are several apps like this out there but this is the one I tried and I found this one simple to use and it's free. The brightness control issue has been around for a long while, so I'm not confident Dell will be able to fix this or even attempt to at this point. I came across another problem when I started performance testing. This one is fixable, so it's not a big deal, but I, many people might have been affected by this like I was. As part of my brightness issue troubleshooting, I did a fresh install of Windows and set up everything from scratch, but then I noticed that my gaming performance has dropped considerably. But as you can see from the performance overlay, the problem was that the GPU was limited to 40 watts. It's usually in the 90s and has a theoretical max of 130 for this laptop. I tested it again under Witcher 3 and it was the same thing. Street Fighter 6, once again the same thing. Also the GPU temperature was not reaching its normal levels either. So it turns out Dell released a BIOS update that actually may have been bricking some people's laptops. Um, but in my case, all it did was drastically hamper the gaming performance. They have since taken this BIOS update down, but if you're having the same problem, make sure to downgrade to the 1.9.0 BIOS update, which is still available on the Dell support website. As you can see, I used to have the 1.11.1 as the BIOS version. Anyways, after that, everything seemed to be back to normal, and luckily this is the last problem I've had. So let's go do some gaming performance tests now. Back to Proteus and all its high frame rate goodness. This time I'm testing without the G mode. I found that the G mode is a little bit too loud with the fans and I often don't need that extra performance. I usually play with VSync on and cap the frame rate somewhere between 60 and 165 since 165 is the max this screen can handle. But for these tests, I'm leaving the frame rate uncapped. As you can see, it's usually around 120 to over 200 frames per second. The temps are still what people consider high but like I always try to tell people, it's just the way Dell designed this to eke out as much performance as possible when everything's running at 100%. The CPU maxed out at 93 degrees, while the GPU maxed out at 86. I've already used this for two years with these temperatures, so I'm not that concerned it's going to cause a problem. Using an uncapped frame rate will usually make the temperatures higher in general than normal use. 
Witcher 3 with this new graphical upgrade is also running really well. I found that the ray tracing mode is still a little bit too costly for a laptop's 3060, but if you don't mind playing at 30 to 40 frames per second, ray tracing will still work. I didn't notice much of a difference with DLSS or FSR on, at least at a 1080p resolution, so I left those off. It'll probably help image quality if you want to run the game at a lower resolution though, to get a higher frame rate. I also wanted to show a more recent game, so here's Street Fighter 6. The world tour mode is actually pretty taxing on the GPU, so the busier areas with lots of lighting like the city square will have uh, frame rate dips. I found normal mode is a lot more stable, while the higher settings can drop to 30 to 40 frames per second range. It's still very playable, and luckily the actual fighting scenes are still a solid 60 frames. So as you can see, the performance for modern games are still pretty good. From what I've heard, the 4060 isn't that much of a difference from the 3060, so it's probably not even worth getting an upgrade. So I think this two-year-old laptop is still very relevant today. While I'm still happy with the investment in this laptop for the past two years, I don't feel like I can really recommend it anymore with all the software problems that are happening. I can't really speak for the newer generation G15s or even the G16s, but if they're built similarly to this G15, I think the hardware is solid and you can get some amazing gaming for the money. Let's just hope their software support is better for those than it was for mine. As for me, I'll continue to use this laptop as my primary PC gaming platform with my Steam Deck in tow for portability or lightweight games. I currently don't have a desktop computer, uh, so this is it.